Hola chicos. Ok, esta semana vamos a estar hablando de verbos irregulares con cambios en la raíz. Verbos irregulares con cambios en la raíz is just a fancy way of saying stem changing verbs, right? So these are verbs that have a change in the stem. They follow generally three to four patterns. Um, sometimes the old uh, ODUE are grouped with the UDUE, so sometimes there are only three patterns, but um, generally, right, it follows these four patterns. So the O will be changed to become a UE, the E will be changed to become an IE, the E will become an I, or the U will become a UE. You may remember, right, that you had an activity where you were saying juega, right, or juega, and many of you put jugo or juga right, which was not a word. Uh, jugo is a word, but right, it means juice, but uh, it's because, right, you were missing the U-E section, right? So uh, when it says O to U-E, what it means is as a first step, you're going to go to the verb in the stem, take out a part of the stem that has this vowel, you're going to take out the O, and then instead of having an O there, you're going to insert a U-E directly into the verb before conjugating. Okay, so here are different types of stem changers that are common in Spanish. E to I, E, O to U, E, and E to I. You'll notice that they only stem change in certain forms, right? So here, all of these are stem changing. I just write a little note for everybody to see. You see here, all of the yo form is stem changed. All the Tú and the él, ella, usted is all stem changed. And then the ellos, ellas, ustedes is stem changed. But then notice here, no stem change in the nosotros and the vosotros form, okay? So that's something important to remember. You will never stem change the nosotros and vosotros form. And again, right, all I've done is whenever I've stem changed is I have taken out so see here, I've taken out this E and instead I have replaced it with an IE. So I've taken out this E and I've replaced it with an IE. Taken out that E and replaced it with an IE, right? Or taken out the O, right? This O here, I've taken this one out and I have replaced it with a UE, right here and here and here. And then here, I've taken out this E and I've replaced it with an I, right? So that is really all I'm doing. I'm just adding one little extra step before I do my conjugation, okay? Okay, you notice though that they're gonna conjugate according to the ending again still, right? So all we're doing is we're adding an extra step but we're not gonna change the fact that it has to conjugate AR or it has to conjugate AR or it has to conjugate ER or it has to conjugate IR, right? We're not gonna change that. If it ends in an IR, ER, AR, it still has to conjugate according to AR, ER and IR endings. The only thing we are doing here is we are adding an extra little step before we tack on those endings. So we still have to stay within the three categories of verb endings, okay? All right. Okay, so here's some examples, right? So here we have E to I, E. Here are some verbs that meet the E to I, E, right? Cerrar, comenzar, empezar, entender, pensar, perder, preferir y querer. All of those are going to have E to I, E are gonna be in that group. O to U E, right? Here are some verbs that have O to U E. Almorzar, contar, dormir, encontrar, mostrar, poder, recordar, volver, right? Are all going to have O to U E. And then we also have E to I. And here are some examples of the E to I. Servir, seguir, conseguir, and decir, right? Also. These are often called or the form that we often think of when we think of stem changers is changing inside the boot, no? So this is what we think of often when we think of stem changers. We think of them stem changing inside the boot um, because just these four forms change. 
So again, right, generally we tend to think of them as stem changing inside the boot. You remember when we did irregular yo verbs, right? We said they were sombrero verbs, right? Because they change only in the sombrero. So here, right, they only change inside the boot. Okay, so here are some examples. Again, right, we've just taken out this O and we've put UE here. That's the only difference that we've done. Now, one thing that sometimes people will ask is, let's say we have a longer verb and we have two vowels. So here, for example, we have two vowels. We have preferir, oh, perdón. We have this E and we have this E here. So how do we know which is the, and here, right, we have an O, but we also have an E. So how do we know which is the vowel that's the right one to stem change? Well, the vowel that we're gonna stem change is always going to be closest, sorry, I just, I lost my little cursor. Um, it's always going to be closest to the infinitive, right? So just trying to find the, where did it go? Oh, I found it, there we go. So it's always going to be closest to the infinitive. Um, let's see, get my mouse back and then do this again. And so, well, I can't see it. So I can't draw with it if I can't see it. Where'd it go? Okay, well, it's having some, it's having some technical difficulties. So that's okay. Um, I can't. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where did it go? There it is. All right, well, wherever it's going to be, it's just going to be the one that's closest to the infinitive. So here we have this AR, right? Here we have this AR. So it's going to be this vowel because it's closest to the infinitive or here it's gonna be this vowel because that vowel is closest to the infinitive. Okay, so let's look at some examples. These are some uh, verbs that are Sombrero verbs and bota verbs, both, right? Because they have tengo, digo, vengo, but then they also stem change. Okay, so let's see if, how we do. Let's try to conjugate empezar. So remember, I'm gonna take out this E, right? And instead I am going to add an I E. Okay, so let's give it a let's give it a whirl. It's gonna be yo empiezo tu empiezas, él, ella, usted empieza, nosotros empezamos, vosotros empezáis, ellos, ellas, ustedes empiezan. Remember, right, we're just going to stem change the forms in the boot. Okay? Que volver is going to be O to U E. So we would have yo vuelvo, tú vuelves, él vuelve, Nosotros volvemos, vosotros volvéis, ellos vuelven, no? Again, just stem changing the ones inside the boot. And now we have repetir. So we have repito, repites, repite, repetimos, repetís, repiten, no? Okay. Here, let's just match together some words that would be the same, right? So if I said, I water the plants, yo riego las plantas. You start studying, empe empiezas a estudiar, no? Marta and Gabriel return home, Marta y Gabriel vuelven a casa, no? We serve a great meal, servimos una muy buena comida, no? Y'all sleep well, Eh, vosotros dormís bien, I play soccer, juego fútbol, Rafael understands everything, Rafael entiende todo, we close early, cerramos temprano. Now if we were to fill in this chart, okay, with the verbs conjugated, tú is in the bota, so that means it has to stem change, so tú prefieres 
ir los lunes al cine, pero a mí me gusta ir al cine los sábados. Ok, so here's another one. Nosotros, outside of the boot, remember, nosotros y vosotros never is going to stem change. So in that one, we're going to say regamos las plantas. Yo is inside the boot, so that one has to stem change. So yo puedo escribir mi ensayo super bien, soy buena escritora. Ricardo and Elena would be ellos, so that's inside the boot. So el, eh, Ricardo y Elena el, almuerzan al mediodía en el restaurante La Fermín. Teresa, also inside the boot because it's ella, right? So Teresa juega tenis y voleibol en, tu, en su tiempo libre, perdón. Y eh, Regina y yo, es a nosotros. Nosotros, right? Because I'm in the group. So, comenzamos, ¿no? Yo is in the boot. So, we're going to stem change it. So, yo pierdo mis llaves en mi bolsa todos los días. Y queréis vosotros ayudarme con mi tarea. ¿Ok? Ok. Y finalmente, por esta semana, vamos a también ver comparaciones y expresiones de igualdad y superlativos, ¿no? Ok. Estas son unas comparaciones o usos de comparativos, ¿no? Es decir, es más o menos que algo, ¿no? Yo soy más alto que tú, ¿no? Ella tiene más amigos que yo. Yo soy menos rápido que un leopardo, ¿no? Eh, es decir, no, eh, es más rico que el mío, ¿no? O ese café es menos, ¿no? Es menos delicioso que el que hago en casa, ¿no? Otros, otros ejemplos, ¿no? Ok, otras expresiones, ¿no? En inglés, es decir, es more or less than, ¿no? Hoy hace menos frío que ayer. Today it's colder than it was yesterday. José es más fuerte que yo. José es stronger than I am. O comparing actions as opposed to adjetivos, sustantivos, o adverbios, no adjectives, nouns, or adverbs, you would put más que or menos que together, no? José bebió más que Ramón. He drank more than Ramón, no? Or for comparing numbers, you would use más de, no? Okay. If we use a verb, no? We would say A más que B, ¿no? El perro es más grande que el gato, ¿no? The dog is bigger or, you know, more big than the cat. Expresión, eh, expressions of, of equality, ¿no? Expresiones de igualdad, or tan como, or tanto como, ¿no? La película es tan interesante como la novela. El aeropuerto está tan lejos como la estación. O tanto como... Tanto, tanta, tantos, tantas, como, ¿no? El museo es tantos cuadros como esculturas, uh, o oh no, perdón. En el museo hay tantos cuadros como esculturas, ¿no? O en la clase hay tantos alumnos como alumnas, ¿no? Eh, those are some examples. Ok. So, expresiones de igualdad are going to say as many as or just as many as, ¿no? Or as much as, ¿no? Tengo tanta simpatía como ella. Felipe sabe cantar tantas canciones como Gustavo. Or sometimes he would use them together as one, you know, together, like tanto como. Yo, yo, yo corro tanto como Pepe, tú hablas tanto como tu madre. Or sometimes they would be a little bit separate and you would use tan como. Ana corre tan rápidamente como perro. Uh, Penélope, perdón. <laughs> y Francisco es tan inteligente como Pepe, ¿no? So if you're saying as much as, no, you're going to say tanto como. Trabajo ton, tanto como ellos o Sonia ahorra tanto como puede. Okay. When you're going to use adjectives and adverbs, you're going to split it up, ¿no? El, el tulipán es tan bonito como la margarita. Su corazón es tan grande como el tuyo. La mamá sonríe tan felizmente como la niña. Enrique no escucha tan atentamente como debe. When we say superlativo, what we're saying is something is the most of or the worst of. If we went to a restaurant and we said, oh, this worst restaurant I've ever been to, that's a superlative because it's saying it's of the quantities, right? It is the absolute worst, no? 
So you can say it as, es el más o menos, no, eh, de, no? Uh, esta ciudad es la más bonita del mundo. The city is the most beautiful in the world. Tu disfraz es el más gracioso. Your, your um, costume is the funniest, no? Este libro es uh, el menos interesante. This is the least interesting book I've ever read. No, you can also do this with isimo, isima, isimos o isimas, no? Estoy contentísima. I am the most content, no? Este pantalón es carísimo. It's the most expensive, no? Estos edificios son altísimos. They are the most tall or the tallest, no? So it is to say something is the most of something. And you can also do it when you're talking about um, age, right? Here, yo, el mayor de mis hermanos, no? I am the oldest of all of my siblings. Or if we say el menor, right? I am the youngest, no? Okay. I hope that helps to make a little bit of sense um, out of comparison superlatives and also uh, stem changing verbs. Um, and I will see y'all guys all next time. Que les vaya bien esta semana, chicos.